Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Anthem live stream. Uh, I'm Ben Irving, one of the lead producers for the game. And we have a very special guest joining us today for the very first time uh, in Anthem live stream history, uh, Chad Robertson. Chad, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? Hi, I'm Chad. Yeah, I'm the head of live service for BioWare. Um, I've been in the industry for quite a while. Uh, Anthem's been a real uh, joy to be part of the development for it, but it's actually in my career, I've been doing online games for almost 20 years now. So uh, I've seen a lot of stuff. Um, and I think what we're doing with Anthem is really going to be amazing for the fans. Awesome. So we have a pretty cool agenda today. We are going to talk through a few things. Uh, we have Chad here, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, the demo and are we ready to go uh, for early access here real soon. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of the game, but more just as background for chatting. We wanted to as part of discussing the demo, talk about some of the cool things we've done since then. There's a lot of quality of life stuff that went into the game that really came from player feedback. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we'll play a little bit of free play and just answer some questions. And, and that'll be the stream for today. So it's pretty fun. Uh, we're not playing a stronghold. Uh, we are going to play free play and, and do the other things. So um, there is one super important question, Chad, that the whole of the, the universe of Anthem community has been asking, and it is this. What date and time do we go live with early access? That's a great question. Yeah, and we, we understand there's been a little bit of a, a confusion maybe in interpreting exactly our open date for early access. It's this Friday, uh, February 15th at 9 a.m. Central Time. We can't wait to everybody join us. Yeah, and we will not be doing the translations, but if the, if the sum of all the internet yeah. out there could Google turn help. 9 a.m. Help. Central yeah, Time yeah. into all the other time zones of the world for people, that would be helpful. But it is a, a global launch at the same time for Correct. all regions, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah, super excited. Cool. Uh, I can feel chat going wild, so this is yeah. exciting. So get that cleared up. Um, we uh, did the demo uh, a few weeks ago, and you have some pretty cool infographics you made for some internal meetings right, that we were going right. to show here as well. Can we swap over, and do you want to talk through them? Yes. Um, and then, of course, the, our innocent grabbits, um, the <laughs> So, like, see what was going down there, but... Um, Every wall has its casualties. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like, has, has the community looked at those things up close? Because they're, they're amazing, but they're also a little terrifying. So I can understand <laughs> the response that the players had to that. Um, I, I can't wait to see how those numbers trend once the game is really live starting. What time, Ben? It's at 9 a.m. Central on Friday, well the 15th of February. Well We're ready. Yes. We're ready. Let's go. Okay, so can we swap to the game, please? Uh, so um, the next agenda item we had, Chad, was, you know, we did the demo. You released the blogs. That was really great. I think um, the community was was super happy with the transparency that, that that everyone had, and a lot of that was from the blogs you were doing throughout those weekends. Um, did you want to just summarize some of the lessons learned, and and ultimately, I think the question people have is, are we ready for Friday? Yeah. For early access. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Um, <coughs> First off, yeah, I think we're ready. Uh, we're super excited about what we've got. I've said that several times. But if you look at this momentum that's been building with the development team as we've solved problems through the course of the demo weekends, uh, it, you're seeing things come together really nicely. And you, wait a second, you're moving pretty quickly <laughs> through. What's happening there? You're moving a little faster than I'm showing see. Fort Tasa sprint speed, oh. which is amazing. Oh, I see. It looks, looks a little faster than I me. was faking it because this is walking, but this is running. Yeah. And then. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Oops, I missed. And yeah, no, no, back to the question. Yeah, I think. Um, so fast. I, I think we, we, we have, obviously in that first VIP weekend, we had um, some challenges, but the team and the technology uh, responded really well. And the game, I think, itself was still something that stood really strongly for our players and for our community. And then the second weekend, we had an enormous turnout uh, during the open weekend play. And uh, that response was overwhelmingly positive. And I think the, the, everything we've done from the platform and the back end to the front end with the, the game client and everything else has been really ready to go. And I think that we're, we're ready for this, this Friday. 
Cool. And if anyone has any questions on that, uh, Chad's phone number is 512. Uh, I <laughs> actually don't know yeah. what it is. It would have been hilariously That'd not be funny, good, and I'd be yeah. fired tomorrow. Yeah. Um, cool. So thanks for the overview. So um, we want to talk about some things that weren't in the demo. Uh, this is kind of our hit list of things that we think have been asked a lot. Uh, from the community, and there are thousands of changes that we've made since the demo. So it's like impossible to cover them all. Right. These are more like the ones that just seem to rise up. Some of them are big, some of them are small, uh, but some things to talk can, to. Can I talk about that for just a second? Like, yep. the, I got I got a lot of questions too about this, just from you know friends and family. Even like the when you look at the way we created that demo, if you go back to the the time needed for us to prep just the demo, it, it very much was a different experience than the main game in terms of the build um, and the, all the back backend services that went with it. And that's out of necessity for us to be ready to make sure the experience is ready for that demo experience in isolation. And so like in the blog posts that I put out or the tweets that Ben and some of the other uh, folks were sharing, like it's not an exaggeration that thousands of changes um, all really good. In fact, you're going to see some of them right now. Um, the, but like we, we've been working really hard to make sure that both of that demo was a great experience, but also then improving that, knowing from the lessons that we learned to make it a really amazing experience for launch. So can't wait for you to get in there. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we're going to show, I don't think this was in the demo, but it's asked a lot about reputation rewards. So we talked about how we added a reputation system. Uh, there are three factions, and by doing certain things, you earn favor with them. Um, and as you unlock um, you know, or, or earn enough favor with them, there are certain diff different rewards. So I'm just showing an example for Arcanist Loyalty 3. You, know, you can see a bunch of uh, materials available and a bunch of um, you know, blueprints for crafting. And so just wanted to show that the information is available under challenges. Um, it's one of the, the things people ask for. So that is that. Um, I already showed sprinting in Fort Tarsus, one of the most <laughs> requested things. I think it's pretty fast. Like it's a pretty decent difference. Yeah. Um, I, everyone I, will be the judge be, for themselves. It'd, it'd be but. a little unnatural, I think, if it was any faster. I think it's a, it'll it'll get you where you need to go on time. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a list. Can you scroll a little further for me over there, Jesse? Please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so we'll show a couple things. So. I have a controller, but we're actually on a PC. That's how our stream room's set up. Uh, there are a couple of uh, settings people had asked for. Um, I forget all of them, but some of them were. OK, so we put in HDR mode uh, for PC. So that's a thing that's available. I think this is for the 22nd, though, not for the 15th. Um, but all this is detailed in the Reddit post that, that I posted a couple weeks back, but just to show that it's there. Um, we added, so motion blur, when you turn it off, actually turns off before it was also tied to post-processing. Um, and we added a camera shake slider. So right. there are a few a people one. who talked yeah. about motion sickness and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so now there's a slider, 100% um, if you want the most immersive experience possible. And then uh, you, can, you can turn it back from there as you see fit. Uh, that's not all the changes. There's some other stuff like um, uh, field of view. We're still investigating. Uh, oh, we don't right. have that for the 15th or 22nd, but right. hot topic. We're, we're on top of it. Um, and then I've got the controller so you can't see, but we changed the uh, tabbing left and right to Q and E from whatever letters they were before. Uh, again, small quality of life stuff, but uh, it's something super important to us that we're really listening to the community. And even the small things, you know, like tabbing left and right, we think it's important to to turn those around quickly, get them in the game, so we kind of show that we're committed to listening, right. but um, also making the game better. So that's probably enough of that, and now let's go play a little. Um, one thing you'll notice here, I think you think this is cool, I think it's cool, but when you go to the start of Expedition, and this is for the 22nd of February, not for the 15th, um, but we got some feedback that the flow of start of expedition was a bit yeah, confusing. This is, this is and awesome. so it's a lot easier to say, hey, like what are the things I can play? You pick one, and then the rest of the options go from there. So today we're going to play free play. Um, so we'll pick free play. Uh, I want to start at Fort Tarsus because I love that starting point. And after you click those options, you pick difficulty and you can start. Um, I think we'll just do normal. Uh, Jesse told me that we have Uber gear and that we would be noobs to That's play on normal, but I think we'll give it a shot. Um, while we're learning, uh, Jesse, do we have any questions from chat at all? Or, or that was a bit unprompted, but if you could find some questions for us just so we're not chatting and answering anything people want to know, that would be cool. Uh, 
uh, someone commented the menu looks a lot cleaner. So. Nice. That's nice. Thank you. Uh, someone asked, when's it going to be released? What was that date again? Time? I think I said 2.15 <laughs> at 9 a.m. Central Time. Right. But don't say 2.15 because in some countries that's... Oh, that's right. right. Thank you. Yeah, Although there's sorry. no 15th yeah. month. But February 15th. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Thank I grew you. up in Australia. It was yeah. different. It's, 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 it's very hard. It's 15 slash 2 there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. You go from, anyway, that's a different story. Yeah. It's like debating the metric system. Okay. Um, are we going to have someone join us, do we think, Jesse? Because we want to show the party widget, but. So it may happen a little bit later. A little bit later? And okay. If it happens, then we can uh, show it at that time. So I'm going to hand over to Chad, and he's going to fly around a bit, and but I'm going to talk. First, I have to fix something. That was so you forget. So Chad plays inverted because it's the only way he's to play. ridiculous. No. Um, no. Let's have, that, <laughs> let's have that debate. I watched him just before play without changing the settings. It was really funny. So yeah, I was hoping horrible. that he would uh, forget. That's a bummer. Um, so some other things we did. Oh, I should have showed this before we started, but whatever. Um, Grandmaster 1, 2, and 3. You guys had seen numbers in the demo. Uh, that's significantly harder. Uh, we also decided the numbers were misleading. Like... I get hard to understand and give context. So we're actually going to take the numbers out of the strings. Um, but for reference, they're significantly harder, not that you played it. Um, uh, but we've also going to put some guidance in there of like, hey, what kind of gear should you have going into this uh, to each grandmaster difficulty? Uh, and then also what kind of loot drops from there. So hopefully that, that makes that a bit easier to understand. Um, one other note there, like a lot of feedback is around grandmaster stuff. But we purposely made difficulties settings so that it's accessible for the game, right? So we want people to be able to come and play on easy and enjoy the whole experience uh, or push themselves to, to, to normal or hard. And if that's what you want to do, that's great. And then for the people who really want to challenge themselves, we have the extra three difficulties. So it's kind of up to you guys what you want to do. One thing you might note that, that Chad's doing here, so if you look at the compass at the top, there are the red arrows now on the, the edges. That's a new thing we added, a little quality of life improvement yeah, um, awesome. that shows that enemies are off screen oh. and it gives you, oh. that's, that was <laughs> you're gonna worst. join the uh, uh, Ninja Mike uh, GIF club of, of crashing on stream. Yeah. Um, but the red arrows just show the enemies off screen. So it, instead of like doing a 360 to find stuff, you kind of get a, a better sense of if it's to the left or to the right, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, do we have any any other questions, Jesse? We have a bunch more stuff to talk about, but just to break up me talking. Yeah, there was one that was uh, talking earlier about the sigil. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I'm just <laughs> laughing at Chad. <laughs> can you keep going? The, the sigil, um, oh, gosh, I can already see where this is going. On the, reputa uh, the reputation rewards earlier, people were asking what the uh, sigil on the blueprint. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not sure. I think we might have renamed Blueprints to Sigils. Uh, I actually saw that earlier and was like, I should go ask someone that question. So uh, let's let's follow up on that after and, and post the answer. Um, my understanding is they are the crafting Blueprints, though. Like, the functionality is the same. Like, it unlocks the ability for you to craft those things. Uh, and so, again, in that world, if you're not getting the gear that you want, uh, you can kind of craft it um, to, to fill in the gaps. Yeah, it's not much uh, it, normal to mix it, uh, even for me. Uh. Is it too easy? <laughs> yeah, a little too easy. Do you easy. want to start it again? Yeah, we should probably start over again, so there's a little bit more. We it, could put it on Grandmaster 1. Just don't let me one. fly, apparently, with the Colossus, because apparently that's a, a weak point for me. You should, but let, let's, let's mop these guys up first. Yeah. And then let's do it. How's the, uh, what's the response? I, I don't know if I ever saw numbers in terms of spread from the demos of uh, what, what the favorite Javelin was. Did you see those? <laughs> no, we should do another poll. So, yeah, we should do a so poll on I that. I did a poll. So Gamble's been doing polls, and uh, I've been doing he? polls. I did a poll that was like, what do you want to see on stream? And it was ridiculous. Like, like, what was it? Like 20, 26%, 26%, 26%, 22%, or whatever the math works out to be. And then yeah. the Ranger won in a tie vote because it was bold on Twitter. So okay. I don't know how close it was. It doesn't tell you. But... Uh, and then Mike's been doing them, and they've been pretty close for which strat javelin you're going to play. But we should do a new one. Let's do a new poll. Yeah. After this, one of us can, can right. post one, and we'll see. Um, and then obviously we'll just buff whoever comes last, so it's fine. Yeah, fair. We won't do that. So apparently I have to talk a little louder for the question, so... Oh, I can repeat the question. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so the question, can you get blueprints and legendary <laughs> quality? 
So can you craft, can you get, so the question is, can you get blueprints at legendary quality? The answer is blueprints are quality agnostic. So once you unlock like an assault rifle, you can craft it at all the different rarities once you get high enough level by getting the uh, correct materials. Um, I think at launch, we would have very few that can craft masterwork or legendaries because they're different, they're different blueprints. So you'd have to actually get like a, a masterwork or legendary blueprint. So we have a, a handful in the game, but not for everything. Um, uh, I don't think for everything, we might have changed that. Um, but so we want you to be able to like actually go and discover the loot for yourself. Um, but I do know like when we do combat, balancing, um, the guys do craft a whole bunch of legendaries to get the perfect inscription rolls. Uh, so that's definitely a thing you can do. Um, uh, but I'm not sure exactly which ones you can or can't do. Uh, but there are definitely a bunch of legendary and masterwork uh, crafting blueprints. I'm making this up. And if I get that wrong, we will clarify. Because these are now good questions that I'm surprised I don't know all the answers. So, hey, so there's, a, there's a recommendation in the chat to um, not let me you play? Might, you might die. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even paying attention to that, I'm sorry. I was listening to you, I was learning. Oh, okay. Yeah. So That's your first asking, mistake. Yeah. Some people are asking if, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Chad. Oh, no. If, if, if someone else could uh, Can play? some of the Colossus moves off. Yeah, I'll give it back to Ben <laughs> no, in just a second, I'm sorry. If you want me to play off stream, and I will hand you for questions if you want to try to filter Ben. Yeah, I'll play. I like Ben will play, yeah. That's all good. Before Chad wow, was like, like, hey. That, is that like a polite way to <laughs> say I'm the worst? It's like the only suit I haven't played is the Colossus. I'm just going to let him die now because I'm so embarrassed. Well, here, I can't. I can't. Now you've got you to. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can do it. I'm also a PC player. Side note. Well so let's just get out of here a second. Okay. So the, the chat said, Chad, that you're clearly a Storm main and you're used to playing Storm. <laughs> Is that, well, that's a compliment. Actually, yeah, that's a fair statement. Oh, man. <laughs> now I missed. Okay, we're good now. Uh, okay, but I shouldn't so, stop talking, so other, I guess. Uh, some questions in this is one of the things we're going to talk about. So balance improvements for Colossus, uh, have we changed him at all since the demo? Yeah, so see that little combo action? Maybe yeah, I did see it. Um, that was nice. Yeah, so kind of the feedback from the demo was, hey, the Colossus is awesome when you get all the shield and armor components, but beforehand it was kind of underpowered and people were having a tough time with it. And so what we wanted to do is smooth that experience out. So we made some changes to um, uh, like basic health and shield scaling so that it wouldn't be so intensive to get to that point where it felt good. Uh, so that'll be live. There'll be some more tweaks to do there, but yeah, the idea was to not necessarily make him more powerful at the top end, just to make the journey like a little easier. So that was the idea. Do it. Um, okay, uh, we have a bunch of other stuff to talk about that's not in the game, so we should maybe wrap that up. But man, there's so much cool stuff to fight here. Uh, yeah. Any other? Oh, this is gonna be good. Any yeah, other questions for Chad? Good. Nice. That's good. Come on. Let's get all this action. What did you have on here? Uh, here's a hardware question. I don't know if is there gonna be SLI support? I know the answer. Do you remember it? Yeah. Uh, yes, there will be. Yeah, the plan for that is um, we're working on that for uh, an update after we, after launch. And can you, just in case they can't hear me, what was that about? Oh, sorry. Is there? Will we have SLI support? And the answer is yes. Yes, after launch. Yeah. Because then we we have direct DX11 support on the 22nd, right? Right. Yeah. So. I'm sorry. I meant after the fifth. I meant after uh, February 15th. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Good question. Uh, what else we got, Jesse? Uh, a lot of people are asking about field of view, but I think you addressed that already. Right? Yeah, so we're going to look into it. We think it's important. Um, it's complicated because of all the different modes we have between running, sprinting, flying, and swimming, uh, and, and uh, tight aim and regular aim. So it just, it's going to take us a little bit more time than we than we thought, and so we're on it. We just don't have a, an update on timing yet. 
Is Ben? Oh. Can I ask? A, is Ben getting accolades now for his play as the Colossus? Oh, I've read Rando and actually been not sure. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be uh, yeah. AJ. Oh, did did, uh, did someone show up? Yeah, uh, just because we're in free play, right? Yeah, we just got so randomly just, matched. Got, made got random. So I don't know who yeah. it is. So I was like, uh. Well, AJ said he's in though. Oh, what's his name? Uh, he's the, on the BW Nighthawk account. Of course he <laughs> of is. Of course he is. That's perfect. Uh, then no, that's not him. Can this reach up there? Oh, it does. That's so a little. That's toss, a little OP. If you toss him an invite, we could probably show off that. Uh, Here we go. Nighthawk. Oh, he joined. Nice. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do this. So a question, someone just came in. Can you join a friend in free play without first forming a group in Tarsus? Check this. I don't know, did it work? Sure yeah. did. Yeah, nice. th the catch is you've, there's got to be an empty spot, right? Like if, if free play is full, like we can't boot someone for you. So in that case, like in that case, you'd have to go back to, uh, oh nice, there's a turret here. Yeah, good. Uh, you'd have to go back to, oops, wrong button, back to Fort Tarsus. So let's talk about the party widget. Hey, here he is. Yeah. So that is AJ. Oh, another turret. It's kind of hard without uh, having any, what do you yeah. call it, volume? <laughs> yeah, it was, that was, I'll, I'll use combos, that as my excuse man. why it was so terrible, right? <laughs> um, so you can see the party, we've actually shown this on stream before, but just in case, like, so can he hear me? Can AJ stand still? Uh, I, can, I can message him. Oh, uh -oh. Okay, you can see as we get further away, it d shows directionally where he is, as well as like a, um, what do you call that? Like a Field of pizza view? pie that shows like when I'm really far away, it's super, it's like a line, but when I get closer, look, when oh. I get closer, it'll, assuming he's coming back. I don't know what word you were looking for. You mean like a proximity sensor? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So as we get closer, like that, that splits out to yeah. kind of show that I'm close to him. This is how I know I'm tired. I don't have basic access to words. Uh, uh oh, shield up. Where is he going? Is he just doing his own thing? Anyway, so yeah, as we get closer, you can see that that expands, so you get a sense, and then like the the dot is like he's close, close, and then you can see the um, like the blue icon in the screen that shows him. So pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. All right, I think we've talked about everything we want to show. For now, we have something um, else to talk about, and then we could finish you up want to talk with some about, questions. Well, we didn't talk about the. Uh, there were a lot of from the demo weekends. At least there were a lot of people who had issues with uh, holding on to echoes and problems with that problem. Did we talk about that? Oh, uh, good. No, good point. Yeah. Uh, we and can? also audio. We made a lot of fixes to audio, so I know people were having problems with that during the demo <laughs> weekend. Again, the legacy of that build versus where we are with launch, I think, will uh, address a lot of people's issues there. Yeah, so with the Echoes, we're making some changes. Actually, not 100% which build they're going in, because we, we've had a couple bugs with it. Um, but in the demo, it was like, if someone didn't know they were carrying an Echo, um, like, there was no way to, like, get it from them or whatever. And so people could, like, just not know, or in, like, less cool situations, people would purposely be uh, not super friendly and kind of just be mean and not turn them in. So what we've changed is the echoes basically have a one minute carry timer. So after a minute, um, you'll they'll turn red, so you get a visual cue to it, and then uh, uh, you'll drop them, and they'll respawn at the place where you pick them up from. So you can't hide them or whatever. Um, and that's the same with relics. So we had another issue in the stronghold where like someone would have a relic and disconnect or quit, and that was the end of it. So right. in this case, after a minute, they would respawn. A little chest action over here. Um, so that's better. I can't really show that without getting echoes. Oh, hey. What's up, buddy? Nice. Oh, yeah, we changed the um, emote menu. Yeah. So now they're all bound. You don't scroll. Uh, so it's kind of quicker access to all three instead of it being like having to uh, quickly cycle through and through one. One. This one's for Mike. Just want to throw a little flare out for him. I know it's his favorite thing. Uh, we miss you on the stream today, <laughs> bud. <laughs> Uh, which one? What's the new one you give me? This one? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Hey. Oh, do it again. I want to see it again. It's still doing it. I could. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Here, here, the glare from the because it's it's the glare from the studio, it's, the it's the look, from the studio look, light was black. It's like the look back, like yeah. this one. Yeah. No, I see it. Yeah. 
that's fine. Um, we didn't talk about the other thing we didn't talk about was uh, PC controls, or we didn't talk about any depth. Did you want to hold that to later? Oh, yeah, no, good that? call. I like this. I'm like, I'll be host, don't worry. Yeah. And what, it's actually better what, when Chad's host. This is, <laughs> for, all, for all of you watching, this is why I was so terrible playing. I'm actually not quite that bad, but I'm not that I'm great, but it's, it's, hard e to it's talk much easier to yeah, yeah, it's hard yeah. to talk and play at the same time, at least for me it was. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, we posted a, a Reddit thread on PC controls. The two really big things were um, there was a bug that caused the symptom of negative acceleration. So uh, long story short, if you moved too fast, like it would slow you down artificially, which made it hard for like snap aiming, uh, which is super important, uh, especially for things like heavy pistols, sniper rifles, that kind of stuff. Um, so we fixed that. It actually, we didn't have negative acceleration. It was, it was a bug that had the symptom, kind of whatever, it's a moot point. Uh, so that's fixed, which makes a big difference, I think, to that. Sometimes you're like, why, why does that aiming feel weird? And that was the answer, but. Yeah, and there's some, there's some new options for it too, right? In the, uh, in the settings menu. So there is, so that, that, that's the second half. So, yeah, okay. Um, because that one was cool because we wouldn't have found it. Like, that sounds silly to say, but only because yeah. the community spent, like, the energy. Like, we've played it so much that sometimes you get too close to it. Right. Um, so just to say thanks to the community. Yeah, the absolutely. second one was we did a pass on swim and flight. So there are a couple of issues there. Like, we realized we were balancing to 1,200 DPI, which I think, sorry, to 1,800 DPI. And by default, most mice plug in at, like, 1,200 DPI. Yeah. So, like, that was That's causing some right. problems. Um, there was also the problem with lag, like when you were trying to fly, I don't want to control, I mean a mouse, but when you're trying to fly, there was a lag, it kind of felt like you were being towed, um, and we realized that that was the issue, so we, we changed that out, now it's way more responsive, and then we also gave options to basically turn off all mouse acceleration on flight. So I kind of think mouse acceleration on flight, like for me, I quite like it, but I yeah. get that many people want the raw input, and so, We've created some settings for that. And so we rebalanced our sensitivity settings. We broadened out how far the settings go and all that kind of stuff. And so you mentioned a, snap to center option. Cause it's, yeah, yeah, and then it yeah. will reset to center as yeah. well, which is really like, which cool I like, but yeah. after delay. And yeah. people ask, can we have a toggle for that? It's like, yeah, that's probably a good point. Like, uh, we don't have that, but if it's a problem, we could, we could probably add it. Um, uh, so we were going to try to show it, but like, I don't have a table, so I, don't, I can't show the mouse. Um, Take my word for it, maybe? <laughs> is, that, is that a thing that we're doing? I don't know. I've played it. Yeah, you think it's better? Yeah, it's way better. Yeah, yeah. I've been playing at home yeah. as well. It's yeah. way, way, I, like... I, I mean, you made the comment earlier that I think it's true. It's like we've been playing the game so much, um, although my play today didn't show it, uh, that we've gotten used to the way the settings are for the game. And so I think a lot of us have gotten used to just jamming up sensitivities on, um, on the mouse to like maximum values and then Adjusted or adjusted mentally to how much we were moving the mouse and the pad to how we yeah. were playing, and in reality, we'd conditioned ourselves in a way that behaviorally, I think, then when the when our players got in and played it, they're like, "Whoa, this 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 needs some help." And right. we've, thanks for the feedback; it's it's made it better. Yeah, same thing. Like the specific feedback is what's super helpful there. Um, so that was really cool. Um, but yeah, like I used to say, like you know, flight is just better on a controller, but I actually don't think that anymore. Like for me, I, I after playing a lot of time on a controller for flight, I'm not so great at aiming on a controller, but um, yeah, that was the other like, thing. That was a like PC just never felt great. But right. now for me, they, they feel equal. Uh, and same with swimming. Like a lot of the problems with flight were just exacerbated in swimming because of the slower nature of it. Um, so that's way better as well. All right. So yeah. uh, we are going to, oops, uh, I missed. That was a huge whiff. Uh, we are going to move now. <laughs> oh, this is the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Jesse See? is talking to me. I'm talking yeah, to you. I'm yep. playing. We're getting, still notes crushing. On the, we're getting notes if, on the screen. If we're being it's honest, like there's a lot still, going on. Still crushing. Yeah. So, what we might do is let me wipe these guys out. So, the last thing we want to, to talk about is something that, that Chad and I are super excited about. We worked a, a lot on this. Is, um, yeah, for sure. Okay, this is all about launch, but we have this really cool live service. The launch is really just the beginning. There's so much more to come. And so we released, I don't know when it was, a week ago, two weeks ago, a yeah. week ago, uh, the start Last of a live week. roadmap. And so right. we just wanted to, to bring that up and uh, just talk you guys through it. Like, we're not necessarily going to reveal more information, but um, we think we can offer more context uh, to it. Because kind of our goal for the roadmap was 
to really make sure people get that for us, this is just the beginning and that we're really committed to it and want to have a rich yeah. live service. And so I won't steal the thunder from what we're going to talk about, but if Lisa, we can swap out a game. Uh, I should probably put the controller down or I'll keep playing. <laughs> uh, swap out a game and take us to the roadmap if we have it. You know, I think it's... <clears throat> We're just the best thing is you're, you're going to live longer here than I did when I was playing, just standing still. <laughs> well, uh, AJ's out there killing everything for us. Oh, yeah, you, fair. You didn't, fair. You didn't yeah, have... Yeah, I didn't have that benefit. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, fair I enough. I mean, Nighthawk and Dragon are brothers they, forever. Forever, exactly. Uh, if you don't get the Nighthawk and Dragon joke, literally into Google type Nighthawk and Dragon. Yes. And then and picture then, uh, yeah. one of them is me and one of them is Mike Gamble. That's, right. that's the joke. So... Um, yeah, so the context, this is, this is one of the assets that we uh, shared last week uh, talking about where we're going with this game for the long term. And, I, you know, I, I think I'd take a step back and kind of introing this a little bit and say through the shows that Ben and I have been doing and the interviews that we've done, one of the main questions we get is, like, you know, from really, you know, committed players, what, um, what's our commitment behind this game and what's our plans for the long term? And putting this out was a big you know, big moment for us because we've been working on plans for post-launch for quite a while, mm -hmm. uh, and and we've got you know, and we've got people working on that now to help make an amazing experience for our players after launch. And so, getting this out in a way that we could start to talk about what's going to come after launch was really an important event for us. And so, this 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 first slide or first image shows um, kind of a commitment to the long term for us in terms of the longevity for this game that we want to see. And you, you'll, yeah, there's, some, there's, there's not a lot of details on there, but I think what you'll, you'll see, and we, we have to be careful what we talk about and what we don't, but um, we, we think about Anthem's post-launch content and these sequence of acts where an act represents this, this grouping of content and updates that we'll do that has a narrative theme to it that we think is going to be super compelling for the players. And this first one we've, we're calling Echoes of, of Reality, and it leads up um, we had. But... The main take I want everybody to have from this is just like we're we're in this for the long haul. We want this to be an amazing experience for for many years. And I think if you look at the way that Bioware wants to evolve games like Anthem, it's it's exactly behind this kind of stuff. Yep, cool. So we flip to the next one. Oh, it's us again. Hey, we're back, but maybe for a second. Um, <clears throat> I can kind of just start talking to it as we maybe get it up. Um, but yeah, like Chad said, you know, it's super hard pre-launch to share the specifics of every update that we're going to do because a big part of going live is, is looking at how players play the game and reacting to it. And so we call that quality of life. Uh, you know, a lot of the things we've just spent the stream talking through is like we hear what players are saying and, and we fix it. And so often to do those things, you kind of have to push out some other plans. And so we, we wanted to kind of, to start with pre-launch, talk in themes and, and speak to, and we can flip over whenever you're ready, um, speak to yeah. the, the kind of, what are the, within act one, like Chad said, it, it, right. it's a bag of things and, and, and each act like could be different. bag. A ba a bag. <laughs> well, you can't see my gestures anymore, which is probably good because yeah. they're silly, but yeah. a, a bag of things. Um, and each act could be different, but in the first act, we wanted to have these three themes. Right. Uh, evolving world, stronger together, and then the cataclysm. And, you know, without going into all the specifics, we wanted to share like what do those themes mean to us and like why are they important, uh, we think, to Anthem the game. And so Evolving World is really the payoff that Anthem is this dangerous world. You know, one of the, the strengths I think of the IP, the narrative, the world building is that this world is constantly evolving and it's constantly changing. And so we wanted to pay that off by saying, hey, when you come to Anthem, there's always a new experience waiting for right. you. And that might be, you know, doing a stronghold or things you know about, but it can also take the form of things like events. And so, you know, an example Wait, of an event. have we shown one of those yet? Yeah, so an example of an event we showed did in we? the demo. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did. Did you guys like that? I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, and so it can be things like that where it's like, hey, maybe we spawn titans in the world right. for a couple hours or a couple days, and titans drop great loot, and we have a challenge associated with it, and then you can collect the loot and, and complete the challenge. Um, and it's like a fun thing to log into. And other things will be more subtle, and I don't want to talk about them to spoil right. them, but there are small things that we think the players who play a lot will notice these things and say, what's this about? And, and, and sometimes there's cool rewards to that, and sometimes it, it leads you into, into something bigger. Well, I think, I think you've really touched on some nice things that we've talked about for quite a while during Anthem's development. And it's like, yeah, there's, a, there's the evolving world piece, but it's also just this sense that there's always going to be something new to come back and discover and, and be part of this, you know, both the community, but also the game as it evolves over time. Because 
hopefully what you're seeing and what we've been showing is this, uh, you know, really meaningful engagement that we want to hear feedback from you about what you like and what you don't like as you're playing the game. And we'll use that as we go forward with the, with the live calendar to adjust things. Yeah. And so just to, to, to take that, that passionate story that we've delivered, uh, like this for us will mainly take the form of events that you experience in free play. And we have a lot of cool things we're doing there. Specifics aside, so we'll get to that. So that was Evolving World. Um, the second one was Stronger Together. And so Stronger Together is really about, um, you know, the freelancers done all this stuff and I went to talk about the story. Um, and their numbers are growing and, and you're forming together to trying to take on tougher and tougher challenges. And we need some social constructs for that. And so um, that's all about promoting social interaction and promoting social competition. So two things that, that are on that page are guilds and leaderboards. Um, and so, you know, guilds are a great way for like-minded people to get together and, and form like a social group where when you get on, you can look who's in your guild, invite people, and kind of group up and, and do activities and stuff like that. And we understand how important that is for games of this style, for sure. It's, it's been part of what we've done for a bunch of other games for, for years, and I think it's going to be a really big addition as, as part of that Stronger Together, together element to, make, to bring that together in a nice way. Yeah, for sure. And then leaderboards, like I don't want to get into the details today, but... Uh, leaderboards is about social competition. So like if you're like ahead in the power curve and you've you're starting to beat some of the more difficult uh, difficulty levels like Grandmaster 2 or 3 and you're starting to get like decked out in masterwork and legendaries, you know, as that loot chase, um, you know, you're reaching a very powerful level, uh, you want to compete with your friends. So then it becomes more than just can I beat the content and and can I get the best loot till to can I do it better than my friends? And what does better than my friends mean? That's the stuff that we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, uh, as well as what content would have a leaderboard and how does that work? And is it like right. a yearly leaderboard or a weekly leaderboard? Like all those things we, we, need, we don't want to talk about right now, but that's some of the stuff we'll discuss. But just to kind of put that out there that Stronger Together is about things like those two things. And that's not the end of the list of what we want to do. Right. It's about improving social interaction across the board. Um, they might be quality of life improvements or some other things we have in mind, but just to, to give a sense of that theme. Uh, and then the third one is the Cataclysm. Uh, so the Cataclysm is really, and we've talked a bit about this in press and interviews and, yeah. and maybe even on, on a stream at some point, but it's really about aspirational content. And so, you know, players often ask questions like, will you have raids? And like, I, we don't want to use that term raid, but like, what does a raid represent? It's, it's aspirational content. It's the thing that you do with friends that you might schedule like Tuesday, Thursday nights to play together. Um, and it's like the toughest challenge with the greatest right. rewards. And so uh, for us, that, that comes in the form of a cataclysm. Um, and there's a lot of detail to share there and a lot of information that, that's not for today. Um, but that's what it represents in the ecosystem. So we're kind of saying, as you come to Anthem mm -hmm. and experience the world, you'll experience this evolving world and events will, will, will spawn and you'll have these unique experiences and then you'll band together in groups and start to right. experience social competition. And then that journey takes you to uh, you know, the, the, big, the biggest part of the act, which is the cataclysm, the saying like, now that you've learned all these things and you form these friendships and you have this power, like now go take on a tougher challenge that's a bit more aspirational, um, but we still want it to be really accessible. So it'll be something that a group of four players can just go and play and have a good time. It's just that they might not get the same loot and rewards as, as a highly coordinated group of, of more what you would call, say, a hardcore players. Yeah, and sure. again, none of that makes a lot of sense without all the details. Yeah. So we're just trying to tease enough to, yeah. to, to say there's some really cool stuff coming. And then as we get into the live service, um, you know, we're, we're fixing the issues that come up and we're improving the game. We can start sharing more details about, okay, hey, and now we're also adding new stuff. What is that new stuff? And and we'll keep sharing that. But there, there are three themes for Act One. Right. Um, the only thing, I'd, I mean, a few things I'd add to that just is like, yeah. if you look at two, um, we can't share details on it, but if you look at the way the narrative will build over that, I think there's some cool things that the, um, the, the fans and players will see with that too. And I think all this ties together both, you know, thematically and systemically in a really nice set of updates that we're super excited about because it, you know, we, we understand the importance of tying this all together in a way that improves the quality of life in the game, um, improves the experience overall, but also advances advances the story and does some things that we think are really cool and unique to the Anthem experience overall. One, and one final point I'd, I'd add. Uh, this is all included with the game. 
So you know, we've got kind of questions about that too. This is not this is not DLC or purchase content. This is part of what you get with the original uh, the you know the purchase of the game. Yep. So we are out of time. We went a little bit over as we always do because we uh, love to chat. Um, but uh, thanks again, everyone, for for tuning in. Uh, it's always super exciting for us to get to interact with the community. Uh, we are super close. February 15th, 9 a.m. Central Time is uh, early access for uh, PC Premiere and PC Origin Access. Cor I'm correct. Is that right? I and think then so, yeah. Xbox and then, One also has. Yeah, Xbox EA Access. Xbox EA Access, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's all happening real soon. Uh, we're excited. Um, Really big shout out to say thank you to our lovely team who put the stream on again yeah, today. Thank you both, the yeah. community team and, uh, and Lisa team, who, who helps out with all of this stuff. You guys are amazing. Uh, thanks to the fans. Always, most importantly, thanks to the developers. Uh, we get to come out here and have a good time and, and chat and play the game, yeah. but there's a lot of people hard at work on, on getting this game ready to, to ship. And now, moving on to the, the live service content that we kind of just yeah. talked about. Absolutely. Yeah, Did thanks you to have any parting words and then we'll... No, will I get invited back? <laughs> yes, I think. Well, let's ask the community. <laughs> well, I think this was Let's fun. do a poll on that, and I bet, no, it's not. Should Chad come back? Let's yes, not. no. Okay, let's yeah. not. How friendly um, is everyone? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So It was great to be here. Um, I'll close with that. Do we have an outro video today? All right. So no outro video, just us saying thank you all so much. Yeah. Uh, we'll be playing with you all uh, come come Friday and, and into the, the service. Uh, we'll probably be anonymous, but we will certainly be yes. there, and, and we look forward to playing the game with all of you. So thanks so much, and we'll chat to you next time. Take care, everybody.